Friends, welcome to the next in our series of services, looking at the life of the early church and the various characters and situations that shaped its incredible growth. Today, we continue to look at Peter's sermon on the day of Pentecost and the response of those who heard it. And our question comes from the lips of the crowd. In response to Peter's message, they asked, what shall we do? As in previous weeks, our call to worship comes from the Old Testament. This time from Psalm 51, David's penitential psalm. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Instead, restore me to the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, that they may return to you. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. The band lead us in our first song, My Testimony. Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven My praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony From death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony Whoa, 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 whoa Come together sons and daughters Marked with blood and washed in water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father our God will finish what he started Our God will finish what he started Oh, this is my testimony From death to life His grace we wrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony
Our opening prayers today are based on biblical, heartfelt prayers to God. There will be moments of silence for each of us to make our own prayers. Friends, at its most simple, prayer is talking to God in such a way that allows God to see our true inner self, our heart, if you like. And he wants us to open our hearts to him. Let us do that together as we pray. Let us pray. The psalmist says, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness, for you have relieved me in my distress. You have mercy on me, and you hear my prayer. Lord, you do not ask for many words. You only want to hear what is on our hearts. For you are more concerned with who we are on the inside rather than how we appear on the outside. So with Hezekiah, the great king, we pray today. Remember now, O Lord, when I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with a loyal heart and have sought to do what was good in your sight. Then after praying this prayer, Hezekiah wept bitterly. Lord, there are times when we try to pray, but words fail us and our emotions overwhelm us. Lord, you know our hearts. You know what we would say before the words would ever reach our lips. For you are a listening God. You are an understanding God, as your response to Hezekiah proved. For you said to him, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Lord, you do not want lip service. Your desire is that we should seek you with our whole heart, no matter what our faults or our failings. As once long ago you heard the prayer of Hannah. In bitterness of soul she prayed to you and wept in anguish. Her lips were moving as if in a whispered prayer, but you heard the inaudible plea and responded by granting her request. Lord, listen to us now as we ask for what we dare not say. Lord, whether in anguish or in joy, may all our prayers come from deep within our hearts. May they be prayers of humble sincerity, Knowing your desire to listen and respond, may our praying be persistent and unwavering. Lord, grant us the help of your Holy Spirit, so that we may pray as we need to pray and as we ought to pray. For in the name of Jesus we ask this. Amen. The song, When I Lost My Heart to You. His breath against my chest My skin was thick But you breathed down all my walls Love Like the fire that steals the cold The ice will thin as your light tore through my door You have my heart
truly crowns to wear my shame The prince's throne for the cross that bore my thoughts Love, like crushing waves of endless grace You won't relent until all I am is yours You have my
I'm grateful to Louise for firstly sharing our reading and then leading us into our intercessions. Peter said, Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the death. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and from all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. Lord, as we listen to how Peter was transformed from the broken man who denied you three times into this amazing preacher and teacher of the early church, we see the incredible power of your Holy Spirit at work. And we come before you to ask you to fill us too with that same spirit so that we could speak of you with that same conviction. Lord, give us the right words to say at the right time the courage to speak and not be silent, and over all that, real compassion for those who don't know you. We take a moment now to name those people before you. In our prayers of intercession, we ask that this same spirit touch our lives and through us the life of our world, our town, our neighbourhood. Spirit of enthusiasm, fill us with the desire for God that transforms hearts and minds. Come Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. Spirit of inspiration, set our words on fire as we tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Come Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. 
spirit of love, bind us together in unity, that the world may see and believe. Come, Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. Spirit of freedom, cast out our life-limiting fears that we may love with boldness. Come, Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. Spirit of peace, empty us of guilt, anxiety and despair, and fill us with an all-sufficient faith. Come, Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. Spirit of power, blow into the life of our world, overturning values, changing stale, selfish ways. Come, Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. Spirit of comfort, when we are ill or sad, soothe us, strengthen us, give us hope. Come, Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. Spirit of joy, turn our tears into laughter, our frowns into smiles. Lead us singing into the life of God's kingdom. Come, Holy Spirit, our lives inspire. Lord God, as we remember your presence with us, your power within us, your love which surrounds us, guide us in our speaking, inspire us in our thinking, minister in our listening, that in your mission we may not falter, but work to share your love and grace with all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
speeches play an important part in Luke's story of the early church. In fact, there are 24 of them, and they take up a third of Luke's total story. Eight are attributed to Peter, and nine to Paul. But these are not the speeches of the Hyde Park Corner variety, because Peter, Paul, James, and Stephen are not espousing their own take on the world's problems and solutions. They speak of God's gracious intervention, his eternal purpose, and his divine solution. The speeches of Acts are essentially explanations of personal experience. They declare to the listening people an explanation of what is going on and its meaning as the Spirit moves to bring the good news of Jesus to bear on Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and indeed the ends of the earth. Whatever these ambassadors for Jesus declare, they're going to be specific, because the biblical word for witness is taken from the law courts, where there is little room for rambling. So the speeches have a very fixed content. This is who Jesus is, this is what happened to him, this is what it means, and this is what you now need to do in response to that. So then, the apostles are not storytellers. They are people who are passing on information, as well as the interpretation of that information, for a particular purpose. And that is to bring their listeners to a point of life-changing belief and trust in Jesus so that they would surrender themselves to Christ and to the love of God and be filled with the Holy Spirit and then begin a new life in the church. What is important is that when the speeches are finished, Peter adds that he was a witness to the things that he has just said. And this is what we mean by testimony. When we give Christian testimony, we're not simply saying that Jesus did this, that, and the other, but that he did it for me. It is not that simply that Jesus offers new life, but that I have taken up the offer of that life, of God's amazing grace. It made me think about how we can give good and true testimony. Well, firstly, start by learning the key events of the Jesus story, the who, the what, and the why. Then, tell our story of what the Jesus story has meant for us and done to us. As we do this, we remember that Luke was determined in his account to show that the early church is not just simply retelling a story over and over again. It is telling a story so that people may live in a way that challenges others to believe too. Thirdly, encourage others to begin their own story, their own life with Jesus. Certainly, our God wants it to be so.
Friends, all the new variants that we hear about in these days are a solemn reminder that this is indeed a global pandemic. So thank God that his amazing grace can reach everywhere and everyone. Take care and God bless. So much has changed in our world lately. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. Don't wait another day.